Hey guys, welcome back to our cartoon review. Today with me I have The Cube. What's up? I have Chris. How's it going, guys? And we have the illustrious Matt K. Thanks for inviting me, scum. Okay, guys, so today we have a big, big, big episode. We've been waiting for it. It's had a lot of hype behind it. The final episode of Samurai Jack. What do you, let me, what do you guys think before we get into this? I think I've been excited to see the end of the series for a long time now, so I, I was really hoping for some, something more. It's it's understandable that it probably didn't live up to some people's expectations, since, since it was only a 30-minute episode in a 10-episode series, but for the most part, I thought it kind of... I, I, wanted, I didn't say it met my expectations, but it was a nice fitting ending to the series. I was okay with the episode. It wasn't bad, it wasn't good. It was somewhere in between. It gets a pass in my book. Yeah, well, with that, let, let's get started. From the beginning, let's do it. If you, if you guys haven't seen the episode, we'll start right at the beginning where the le- where the last one left off, where Aku has essentially captured Jack, and uh, we find out that Ashi is his daughter, and she is succumbed to his power, and she becomes this, like, dark form of herself that looks a lot more like Aku and a lot less like her. As the uh, episode starts, it's a bunch of previous characters that we've seen in the past seasons coming together to these large TVs and watching the intro to the show and how very meta that was. And it also has like the Scotsman there with all of his daughters. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, we yeah, see the right. we see the dogs from the first season that yeah. I think Jack protects. The other characters that we saw in the previous episode that were people that already kind of got a call back. And throughout the whole entire seasons prior to this episode, or prior to this season. Yeah, so they all gather together, watching the screens, we see the intro, and then obviously at the end of the intro, we see Aku pop up and disrupt it and show he has captured Jack and the sword, and the end is nigh for any kind of hope. Instead of it working uh, for him, it works against him, and it unifies all of Jack's allies to attack and assault. Aku's tower where Jack is being held and he in turn is trying to escape and help Ashi kind of fight that part of herself inside that is uh, from Aku. And uh, as the as the fight continues, the like most of the armies have already shown up and then at the end the Scotsman shows up with his ghostly bagpipes and he and for some weird reason I guess in death he gets like a magic buff or some sort of plus two to intelligence or whatever because he just like is able to cast magic with these bagpipes in his ghostly form that makes a trail for his daughters to ride their magic elk on and it stops some of Aku's magic powers which is pretty crazy considering I thought the sword was the only thing that could do that. Well, it's not that the sword is the only thing that can do that. The sword is the only thing that can kill him though <laughs> as we've heard millions of times so far it's Celtic magic. <laughs> The uh, fight continues, uh, and Jack basically is trying to reach Ashi, and he continues to like yell and to try to call to her, call out to her better half. And what ends up happening is he says, "I love you," in the middle of the episode, which was it was a little cheesy. <laughs> it was it was really weird to hear him say that. Continuing on from that, only after when she's about to kill Jack does she change from her evil self to her regular self. And then they're like, oh, hey, you know, uh, Ashi, you've got Aku's powers. Cool. And you see a brief moment where Ashi and Aku are going at it. And then um, she gets Jack the sword and they travel back in time. This is a part I had a problem with uh, simply because during this issue, during this is the last episode and you're, they're jumping back in time. I kind of wanted a little bit more dialogue reflecting about the time Jack has spent in the future. You know, he just... I'm not. I'm not expecting them to know all about the the science behind time travel, but and he was leaving these guys behind to stop their existence. He was going back to kill Aku. I felt like there should have been more. More said to the Scotsman. More said to the people that were helping him. Uh, at least like some sort of thank you or something there. At least just to bring it full circle all around. Those people literally will never exist because he stopped Aku. He changed the entirety of the future so that none of their lives will probably ever happen. There is no reason for them to happen now because that kind of disarray won't be brought about by Aku. You'd think that he would at least take a moment to reflect with like, with the Scotsmen and with the dog people, the Spartans, any of the people that he spent like a numerous amount of time with, that he would just be like, hey, 
Thanks. <laughs> but, and that kind of brings me to the the next part where he, you know, he finally gets back in time and he kills Aku. I also felt that like that was kind of rushed because he jumps back in time right after Aku had just sent him into the future. So it was kind of nice to see that like, oh crap, he's back already. And then it's just a quick fight where he's destroying Aku, which makes sense because coming back, he'd definitely want to finish the mission. But once again, I wanted a little bit of dialogue there. I mean, these two had been enemies for, I mean, what was it, over 60 years now? And it just kind of, it felt so quick. Killed him as fast as just like another generic enemy. It wasn't, there was no vibrato to it or anything like that. In, in Jack's instance, where Aku's about to drop down the hammer and probably send him into another dimension or something like that before he goes back in time with Ashi, you know, would you have time to say, like, stuff to the people that you helped or that have helped you in the past i i understand and then, that and he wants to finish the mission and all but this is a cartoon that's been around since like early 2000s oh, and oh, yeah. everybody's waiting for this big finale just for the sake of the fans you were kind of expecting him to say at least one thing to at least the scotsman who served <laughs> kind of as his closest ally and there was nothing he just jumped into the past with his girlfriend that he met this season and i yeah. personally i didn't like that i kind of wanted more i wanted him to well, at least leave the future in a good place, despite it getting eradicated by him destroying Aku. He does talk to the Scotsman when uh, he sees him again, and then the Scotsman's all trying to like, oh hey, have you met my daughters already? And then he starts going throughout the list of the daughters. But but do then... you see my point? That's yeah, that's, yeah, a, that's yeah. a real that's a real deep conversation he had there with the Scotsman. I wanted something more. I wanted a you little wanted some... more character. You wanted a little bit more depth to what to the Scotsman and Jack, and then to every and to Jack and everybody else. Exactly. I, I understand that, and I, I felt that the same way too, but yet again, playing the devil's advocate, you have you have a little bit of amount of time to throw this all together, it, you know, just like in the season. For what it was, it was just a little too rushed. But Yeah, exactly. But anyway, uh, speeding on, Jack gets back to the past, you know, he, he immediately decides to Mary Ashi, I mean, we, we can see his face right here. He's he's a super happy looking dude. All his former masters that have trained him throughout the years that we've seen in past episodes come just for this wedding. His dad apparently is alive. Uh, I know Cube, you were telling me earlier that his dad actually died when he was a child. So I'm not sure how that makes much sense. They're about to get married, but of course this is all just one giant paradox. And because Aku is dead, technically Ashi shouldn't have even existed this long. And it's it's pretty somber, but she actually disappears into his arms during the wedding. And where we leave off, we see a, a very sad Jack reflecting on his life, reflecting on his loss of love, what he's been through these 60 years. And we see a very nice scene where he's sitting underneath a tree and a ladybug comes and rests on his finger, similar to when Ashi first appeared, signif kind of signifying hope that he could still you know, make a life out of all of this. And that's kind of where we leave the series. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a it was a somber ending. I won't say it was. Yeah, it was a pretty somber ending. I I did like the ending. I was a little mad that Ashi didn't uh, disappear earlier, like right after they killed Aku. Like I would have liked to have at least a little bit more di or, uh, some dialogue with that. But they decided let's uh, let's make them get married first, or attempt to get married, and then have her disappeared. I think that's what kind of saved the the episode for me it was just the fact that okay they're finally having Ashi disappear so that's okay with the time but still you know you got some holes where you have Jack's dad picking up what I'm putting down yeah I understand you I understand and uh like you I I simply I like the ending just because when you think about it as a whole um this guy was he's been through hell he was tossed into the future he couldn't really understand much he lived there for 60 years just kind of getting crapped on by different assassins and constantly in, in fear of dying and stuff and then he finally makes it back and then you see this girl that he finally makes it back with and she disappears and it kind of makes you think like oh crap was that whole journey worth it but in the end he's sitting down and he's looking out and I, it kind of makes you feel like it was like in the end it, it was worth all along uh, personally if they could have redone the ending I would have liked Jack to actually have stayed in the future, just kind of fix things there since, you know, he had already made all these friends, all these different allies, and there was no point really going back, but I guess that's that's what the full circle was in all. I mean, it was always about him going back to the past and stopping Aku. 
So it makes sense that they decided to go with that direction. This also yeah. kind of, like, uh, for the uh, people that have seen the final seasons before this, this kind of disrupts what the Guardian was saying, too, at the time portal, because... Uh, if you guys have seen the episode, there's a time portal guarded by this blue man with blue skin. We've talked about him in previous episodes. They show a vision of the future where Jack is like a king with long flowing mane and a beard, not like not unlike the beginning of the season, but he's not here anymore. Like that future, I guess, is just gone because Ashi can use time control. Uh, I'm assuming that was just an alternate timeline that got retconned, so it doesn't exist anymore. I was hoping toward the end that we'd be seeing an older Jack going to fight the Guardian in the present day he was at and actually defeating him and going back into the future to see if he could maybe save Ashi or something but toward the end of course that obviously didn't happen but I, I don't think it's too big of a deal I know a lot of people were really salty that that fight never actually happened in the show but uh, I mean we, we still got a, a very good season towards the end we got 10 great episodes showing what Jack has been through and how he's grown as a character so guys, with this, I mean, we've had a, a great experience with Samurai Jack. It's been, we've been waiting for this for years. Everyone that's grown up with Samurai Jack, whether or not we got the ending we wanted or an ending we're disappointed with, the route that Gendy Tarnovsky went, I personally, I am I'm okay with it. I speak, I think I speak on behalf of everyone here that we will always love Samurai Jack. And <laughs> this, this is a... A big ending that uh, to a new chapter. Hopefully, in the future, we see new work from Gendy. We appreciate all the stuff he's done. But uh, any final thoughts, guys? Yeah, um, I just like to any of the viewers, you know, thank you for just joining us and watching our videos. You know, watching the ten episodes we got to watch with you guys. Unfortunately, one was taken down, but you know, we're here still. We're still there. Are eight other episodes you can take a look at, and nine. I, uh, nine. My bad. Um, and I hope you, uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed the series as much as we did. Uh, once again, thank you for just, uh, joining us on this journey of Samurai Jack. And, uh, hope to see you guys next time with, uh, another cartoon or comic series. And if you appreciated our, this video and you liked it, please leave a thumbs up and a subscription. It really helps us out a lot. And most importantly, leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear you guys' thoughts. We'd love to butt heads, even if it comes to that. That's what we do. That's what we love. But keep it good, guys. And here's to the future.